Greetings and welcome to CRT Gaming, episode number 24, Super Dimensional Fortress, Macross. It is I, Jones, and with me this evening are my good friends, Gohan and Daspic. And Mr. Daspic, the Centrati have just invaded Earth. They've attacked Macross City. Are you prepared to enlist in the military organization known as UN Spacey? Yeah, I'm not going to understand anything they're saying, but uh, but I'll, I'll fly along. I'll take part. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Mr. Gohan, have you been infected by the protoculture? Jones, listen, I'm here proudly as a decorated officer of the Skull Squadron. But my question to you both is, do you remember love? I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's not ringing a bell? <laughs> No. No. <laughs> no. Not in the least. It's sad. He, he had a he was robbed an important part of his childhood. I didn't get to this part until my cross plus. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, that's that's a bad a bad part of the party. It, it's good. Yeah. It's uh, I like it a lot, but it's it's different animal. Yeah, um, I love Macross cross plus, but yeah, that's the only one I'm familiar with. Yeah, so we were doing like I said I got with the uh 3D third person shooter and uh this is something that uh, I didn't know even existed, to be honest with you. Uh, this came out during kind of like a C of, of when things were being released. Like you had the Dreamcast, PlayStation 2, Xbox, GameCube, where everybody was pumping games out. And the fact that this even came out overseas made it, you know, I just never even knew it existed. As I had uh, played... Uh, games in the past that were either like Macross or like Robotech and they, they were like on the Nintendo um, like Super Nintendo had one uh, I think PC Engine even had one and th there was also one on the Saturn but they were all like 2D which they were cool for what they were but it was kind of a uh, uh, it wasn't really what, what you wanted. I mean, it was cool that it, it had the Macross or Robotech like, characters and theme to it, but it, it, you weren't like truly playing the game like I, I wish I could. And then I remember back on the original PlayStation, they had the uh, Macross like, VFX came out. Uh, mm -hmm. I played a I couple that. of those. Yeah, they were okay. And then... The GameCube had that Robotech Battle Cry came out, which was cell shaded, which I really liked. Uh, it looked but, good. Yeah, I like cell shaded not good. games. <laughs> yeah, it was not that good. So I was kind of let down with that. That was my last experience with any you know type of uh, Macross game. You know, I'm looking through these games and I find out that this exists and it happens to be made by the Sega AM2 division. Which, you know, they're responsible for like Daytona, like Shinmu, Fighting Vipers, Virtua Racing, you know, vir the whole Virtua Fighter series, the Virtua Cop. So, I mean, they did a lot of amazing stuff. So I had high hopes going into this. Well, I mean, needless to say, we're, we're fans of that team. I mean, I think we've made that abundantly clear on here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, yes. And at the, at the time, right, like import games were becoming less of a big deal because at this time in history, games, you did not have to wait months and months and months to get the U.S. copy of it. So kind of keeping up with the import scene became less of a thing. And I think cool titles that were Japan only releases like this, they, they just didn't come up on people's radars as much as they did before when there was more of a kind of a thriving import scene. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's a shame because this game really, it took me back to when I was a younger, like, you know, not quite a child, but I was a, you know, a teenager. And, uh, you know, this is the time where, uh, you know, the, it's pre-internet. Uh, there is, you know, you got about six channels to watch on TV. Um, and I remember when you get home from school, it, it was like, this is kind of what you had to look forward to. There was like... You know, you know, like I watched like GI Joe, uh, like like He Man, uh, like Thundercats, you know, Transformers, and then Voltron. 
And then yep. all of a sudden, the show Robotech comes on. <laughs> yeah, the Silverhawks are cool. Yeah. But then, but then uh, you know, this show Robotech comes on. And uh, it, it was unlike anything I've ever seen before. Um, it, it, it was absolutely like I know there's like big fights between the Macross community and the Robotech community because they kind of change things here and there. But for when it came out, this you know this series blew my mind. Absolutely, the compared to all those other um, TV shows that were basically just vehicles for toys, toy commercials essentially. Seeing uh, Robotech, you know, Macross on TV, it was it was like the serialized program, and the story was ongoing, and of course, it like has <laughs> every single cool thing a you know. 10 to 13 year old you know boy kind of wants it's a show about you know planes and adventure and of course you know transformable robots and just the whole i don't know it, it's just so so different than all the other kind of cartoon entertainment that was on uh around that time no no definitely because the uh, you know like i said it dealt with you know like space aliens uh alien technology you know planes transformed plane transforms got legs you know it's got arms and it's holding a gun you know it was just totally the, the harsh realities of war <laughs> yeah <laughs> it was <laughs> yeah it was pretty crazy and then and then uh, amongst that whole dude thing, i choke had... i choke up when roy dies yeah, yeah. oh spoiler bro come on oh. <laughs> sorry daz <laughs> Yeah, 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 it's it's only forty years old. Couple decades. <laughs> it's only forty years old. <laughs> but it's you know essentially like it's the kind of like uh, like like love triangles happening in the middle of this Zentradi human war. Strangely enough, it, in the midst of all that is uh, like like J-pop music, and uh, but it really fits with how it's used. And well, like let's start with with the game itself. Like uh, when you start the game, you can choose between two different scenarios you can choose to follow the plot line of, of the regular Macross story or you can choose to follow the plot line of the do you remember love movie and I uh, kind of just asked you guys to play the uh, plot line just for the you know the regular series and um, I'll save mine for last because mine's pretty biased but uh, I'll ask uh, Gohan here how do you feel about the game as far as a, a translation of, of the series I, I know it's in Japanese and uh, there's a language barrier but outside of that I mean I think at the heart of the show like if you're trying to figure out a way to make a, a video game out of it like yeah like you're saying there's all this great storytelling with the characters and the, the love interests and all that stuff but really the meat and potatoes right is flying you know just using the mecha you know it's that's that, that's what where everyone's head goes towards first at least that's where mine did and it was really cool you know the, having the three modes you know of like Batroid and Jerwalk and Fighter um, there I mean it's just impressive that you could freely cycle between them on the fly um, and each one was a pretty faithful and you know had its own uses obviously of course you know, some of the missions favor some modes more than others but uh but yeah, it was really. There's a lot of thought put into each one of the modes. Yeah, I did find the. Uh, so I, I played it quite a bit and got like once you get the hang of the controls, the more aggressive that, that you choose to play it, the more it becomes like what you used to watch on TV. Because uh, like you can literally, you know, like fly after somebody and then like they try to do like a. A 180 and come back over you then you immediately turn to robot and lock onto him shoot at him and transform back to plane and take off after him i yeah, had quite a few him. times i yeah had some giddy moments because <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of cool uh, things they did just uh like scenes that happened in this game that that i recall like directly happened you know either out of the movie or the tv show as far as like the little cutscene cinemas go um there was one cutscene um if you remember it was, and this was like the coolest thing that m my brain had ever seen as a young child was <laughs> the uh 
the Daedalus attack from the uh, SDF-1. And that's just essentially when it, you know, jams its arm down the throat of a battleship and just uh, rains down all hell upon it. And the, uh, the, the scene in the, the game it was a cool little cutscene, but the, from the actual TV series, it, it just took it so much further and made it that much more awesome. Yeah, I mean, they, they, those kind of little real-time, you know, kind of sequences, they, uh, so much, once again, like about it is the, the story and capturing those like little pieces in history um, from the show's uh, timeline, whether it's like the Daedalus attack or the uh, the kind of the pinpoint barrier shield and uh, obviously like the big, you know, climatic ending, but um, yeah, like, it was kind of cool how the actual Macross, the SDF-1, was a part of the the, the actual controllable gameplay, you know, arena that, you, that the player was in. Yeah, it was cool. You could, you know, if you, it was literally in your 3D space where you could I mean, fly you around could, it. You could I mean, land on I mean, it. Seriously, I think that was super. It was super impressive. Like I, I remember playing it uh, the, you know, the first time after you kind of. Uh, shared it with us and I was like clearly like this thing's here and I'm going to hit a point where it's going to say turn back you know but what I did is I like flew all the way up to the thing transformed into a robot and landed on it I was like holy shit like and that's just something that only like the PlayStation 2 era could really do there's no way that could ever be done on a PlayStation 1 or an N64 or Saturn like and I think that just says something about like the 3D chops of you know the AM2 teams. You know that you know, worked on this. Yeah, it was it was really cool landing. Like you could even land on the uh, like the Zentradi warships, like the big ones, and like so you can land on them and turn into a robot and you know shoot the battle pods as they fly around you and stuff. It, it was it was really I had a really really good time with it. I I had hopes for it, but I my hopes were uh, exceeded in, in playing this game. So, Mr. Daz, um, you know come to understand you didn't get to enjoy this uh growing up but i didn't know you got into the uh macross plus series is kind of when you found out about it having enjoyed that and then going back and playing this what do you think about like at least how the the gameplay was and stuff i like think that? it plays like the intro to the first episode of macross plus <laughs> which i mean uh which has the main character in the you know in the fighter jet you know transforming into a robot and the only difference was that his rifle had a blade on it he was stabbing uh the enemies <laughs> and stuff and that was uh, that's how we kind of daz this one up as if there's a oh, knife yeah, on yeah. The end. <laughs> if there was a knife on the end and they they had a little space blood flying all over the place i would have been totally down but but no, like you said, once you kind of get into the controls a bit and you can, you know, they fly past you and you turn into the robot, you know, machine gun them down and then switch back into the jet, chase them down, that, that kind of shit. When, when the magic happened on the controls and it flowed, it was really cool. That being said, I mean, it was the same type of thing over and over, which was fine. It was a lot of things that were fun, so it wasn't a problem, but I wasn't seeing as how I didn't have the emotional attachment to it that you guys had whenever the little blonde girl started talking I just couldn't skip past it fast enough because I had no idea what she was saying anyway that's Misa yeah <laughs> whatever she was really high pitched and annoying so I had to go and so I, I could I could listen to that so sorry uh, oh. I'm sure she has a great moment somewhere in there but uh, yeah she died at one point when uh I didn't save the ship in time, and I was like, "Should I? Should I restart?" <laughs> kind of, I'm kind of good with this, but I did well, end up saving her. That's what's kind of interesting about the story, at least as far as I can kind of um, surmise. Like they're totally trying to capture all the, and they definitely did, did a good job of this, capturing you know like the main beats of the TV show. But they also kind of have these this new kind of character. Uh, not character, but you, there's new characters that you interact with. And, you know, I wish I kind of understood it a little bit more. Like, the, uh, all I can surmise is that they're kind of like in Roy's squadron. But, yeah, I don't know. Without, you know, being a native language speaker, it's... It, it, yeah. it was cool that it was cool that they were trying to tell a secondary story and, but of course you know i couldn't understand it but it's like you take place in the uh the macross like universe and in the story but you're not like one of the main characters we're familiar with but what is kind of cool is you do get slight interactions with like all the characters that you are familiar with like you know get my man roy 
And then you have... Uh, thought he died. He does die, but... <laughs> what you don't understand, Roy Fokker dying is more devastating than Optimus Prime dying. Do I need to bleep that? <laughs> no, that's his name, dude. Better meet meet the Fokker, and his name's Roy. <laughs> is Robert to do with this? <laughs> the leader of Skull Squadron. Salute. <laughs> yeah, you gotta salute that dude, man. Dude, he's a he's a pimp. But man, so the, had... the whole cast is here, though. Like seriously, like uh, you know, between all the you know, between the captain on the ship and all the you know, Sammy and Claudia and all those characters, like, and I don't know if they got the original actors, but if they didn't, they got really good sounding yeah. cast alikes. You know, like yeah, it did. Like if you were just kind of uh, if this was playing. And I was in another room, but I could hear it, like, uh, with all the sounds, like, in the game, like, because you had, like, you know, like, the, the Macross, like, you know, danger, high-tension music uh, during combat, you know, with the explosions, and then you'd, you know, it would sound like somebody was, you know, watching Macross. It, like, everything was very faithful. Like, it sounded like the, an anime. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, like, the explosions, uh... What I kind of liked a lot was like just the little attentions to detail. So like when you're in space fighting, in the like the horizon of space, you see nothing but little explosion bubbles happening everywhere. The little Macross popcorn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like you're in a war, son. It's big. Yeah. And you're in the middle of it. I will say, yeah. uh, at some point, there's some a heavy robot that you fly that doesn't transform, but it has missiles and a machine gun. That one I really liked. That guy, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, the armored Valkyrie. Yeah, that was cool as hell. I like that one a lot. Just mowing shit down with that guy. That was fun. Yeah, like, my actually, like, favorite thing in the game is at the climax, in, like, the final battle with... Like, I, it, I couldn't even put a number on it. I don't know how many ships are on the screen. It is by far the, the largest ensemble of a, <laughs> a space war I've ever seen. There's just uh, Zentradi ships everywhere. And uh, you kind of have that going on with the like occasional like uh, Japanese talk chiming in with somebody telling you what's up and all to the ballad of Minmay being sun. And it, it it really brought me back to my childhood. It actually, I, I absolutely love uh, level 12. Did you weep? I, I got goosebumps. Okay. That's okay, man. It's all right. It's a safe space. It's a safe space. Hey, Min May. Oh, the Min May, I missed you. <laughs> I mean, but like, just to kind of talk about the levels and the story in the game, right? It's like all of those like things are just completely captured. And, you know, whether it's like seeing the dog fight with Max and Miria, you know, like th these are a lot of kind of iconic moments in the series and you get to kind of like either see them in gameplay or see them, you know, through their cutscenes and stuff like that and yeah, I mean, the music of course is a huge, huge part of Macross's appeal and what made it really stand out back in the day, like it, it really was the first of its kind where it, it's like, you know, this kind of sci-fi action with this idol singer you know kind of a, a kind of combination together the story was actually really yeah, well, convoluted like it, it was pretty crazy for uh something to even comprehend <laughs> as a younger younger child because even like to this day i still don't know if i fully comprehend the story but you are you're fighting the the warrior race uh named the centrati and they were created by this other alien uh, called the protoculture and the protoculture made humans and it made the zentradi and then the zentradi was able to get free of the protoculture and they fought them and then i believe the protoculture ship is what the sdf1 is 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 that correct gohan pretty sure you're you know staying within the lines right now <laughs> okay because like i said I, I i tried to read up on it a little bit because I, I i'm a little a little rusty on it i wasn't a super fan but i really enjoyed it this is kind of where some of the divergence kind of happens between like the U.S. show and the Japanese show, but that that what you just kind of said is kind of my understanding, and it's like you know we are the the benefactors of this civilization that kind of 
predates the bad guys that you're you know fighting against the Zentradi and the the, the male Trotty, the, the female warriors. Yeah, and then basically we, you know, since they're a warrior race, they have no like anything outside of war. So like like emotions or just like anything artistic, uh, it's just totally foreign to them. So they're just kind of they're they're shell shocked, you know, when when the J-pop comes on, <laughs> <laughs> and they infect it with the protoculture. <laughs> I mean. I, I see why. <laughs> they should be. They're starstruck. You know, they don't know what to do. But yeah, I found myself cracking up. There's the one uh, mission where you're trying to uh, take take out the recon ship with the stowaway guys on it. And like in the little picture in picture, they're watching the Miss Macross pageant. And I was just like cracking up as I was like playing that. They're like reacting like, oh, because, you know, like you're saying in their culture, there's like no concept of aesthetics or like, you know, uh, you know, any of those, you know, any of those things. They're just totally focused on warfare, you know. And um, yeah, just like you said, it's the details and that those little details definitely added up. You, you can just tell that, you know, a lot of people who worked on this really love the show. Yeah, yeah, it was definitely, it definitely uh, showed that uh, it wasn't just some, uh, you know, somebody got a hold of the the license to do it and you know tried to make a buck. It was actually they did a really good job with it. Yeah, it and wasn't really, like the, like uh, the, the Transformers not... Jetfire toy. No, no, it was <laughs> not. It wasn't you know any of that. And like you said, like there were quite a few of you know Macross like titles on lots of systems but they're all to be honest pretty not great <laughs> like this is it was so cool to actually put hands on a controller and play something that you know uh d- did the subject uh, material justice yes yeah, uh, one of the things i was thinking about that uh the game did that i i, I kind of really liked was you know if you do like a like a perfect lock on where you get like six locked on missiles uh you would get like a little cinema of the missiles you know taking off with their you know contrails you know flowing through space heading towards the target had fun trying to you know create little uh little action scenes in my replays oh yeah like the little panzer dragoon style lock on you know those little cutscene moments definitely brought like kind of nice moments of pacing to what was typically pretty frantic shooting sequences yeah it gives you a second just to breathe you know in between the <laughs> the insanity <laughs> the, the, just the carnage <laughs> the chaos <laughs> well I'll say this <laughs> as much as you hated me picking 3D third person shooters just think you never would have found this I, it, it, it all worked out against all odds. So you can thank me later. Headshot. He's I may have got to you thank there. you. He might have you there. <laughs> yeah, Jake, because I, I, I really found, like, you know, it sounds, you know, cheesy and maybe a little lame, but episode 12 is absolutely everything I could have ever wanted in a Macross game is, is episode 12. It's the complete package. Thumbs up, soldier. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, 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 they tried to do uh, just bring you into all the just different awesome environments, you know, and whether it was the kind of the asteroid fields or flying around Saturn or like the Mars base where you fight, uh, where you fight Chiron you know, in the, uh, um, you know, in his mech, um, you know, in the one where it is like the escort mission where you're trying to save the, um, the, the human reconnaissance ship, the cat's eye ship. Um, and it did feel kind of cool. Like there were quite a few sequences, right? Where it's like, no, you know, you have to kind of defend the Macross, you know, cause you would see its health and you'd have your health. So you definitely kind of felt like you're kind of defending your base, you know? Yeah. They were pretty relentless. They, they, they beat the, they beat the shit out of my mouth <laughs> out of the SDF one. They, 
It barely survived a few times for me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that thing, you know, the, the warranty's up on that thing. <laughs> but, I mean, out of all the levels, though, like, the only level that I really wasn't... Um, the, the Valkyrie's design didn't work. There was, like, the one level where you're actually fighting inside of the Macross, where it's, like, inside the uh, where the habitat is, and it's, like, they, they kind of box you in a little bit, and I think that was the only time where I felt kind of, like, frustrated with... You know, the camera you know and just moving moving the character around if, if you're outside you know open sky or open space like moving the character you can just tell that the character was just built to be in that environment you know yeah that, that so, helps so much a lot more so to uh like constantly lock on almost like you're playing kind of like uh using z-link or is that guy what it's called for uh ocarina of time like you, you kind of don't want to like free run you kind of always want to lo be locked on to somebody it gets a little more easier yeah to maneuver but yeah i, I understand totally what you're saying yeah, i mean gohan enjoyed it and i think does have a decent time with it i believe so let's i'll try to get some uh ratings from people here so we'll go with uh daz first you have to give it a one to ten daz what are you giving maku ross kind of hate to because i don't I missed 50% of the game because I couldn't understand what the hell they were saying, you know? And so any of the story moments or anything like that, and I know it ties into some, if I had watched the show, it would have made more sense visually. Uh, but I mean, I would just have to base it on the gameplay and the gameplay was fine. I mean, it was a, it was fun shooter. I mean, it was, like I said, the levels are kind of samey. You're doing the same thing in all of them and you're doing the same thing in all shooters. I get it. Um, I didn't hate it. You know, be like a probably seven ish for me yeah yeah fair enough again i don't have that emotional attachment to it that you guys do it was just kind of no but like so i think the, the game itself like uh you know if you want a translation for it i gave everybody links to that but uh it, there's no way like this game could have encompassed what the actual story was so it kind of right. just you know but yeah it would have been a little would have been helpful you know, knowing what was going on going into it I agree mm -hmm. so we'll go with uh, Gohan sir uh, how would you rank this trip yeah, down memory I, I, lane I, I think that's just kind of it like what Daz just said it's like, you know just knowing the context of what's kind of going on and obviously like the time and place when Macross was on TV sets you know in the US uh yeah, there, Jones for fan, longtime fans of the series, like that final mission where you're fighting in the fleet in the Super Valkyrie is just like pure fan service. And you know when the <laughs> you know when the Min Mei music comes on in the last mission, you can't help but be caught up in a huge wave of a nostalgia. You know, like I said earlier, it's like you can tell the team that worked on this cared about the product and really being good stewards towards the show and. You know, it, it's an arcade shooter, you know, uh, version of a third person game with a little bit of air combat in it. And of course, the cool transformation modes are, are just, you know, really need to be there and be successful. But uh, solid little title, I'd definitely give it like probably like, you know, seven and a half uh, as a game. Um, you know, M Macross, you know, has had tons of. You know games made for it that just were not good and this is the first time where i walked away feeling like that was a good macross video game experience like that's and that the first time in my life i ever said that <laughs> <laughs> yeah i kind of can echo that 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 was uh i was pleasantly surprised as to how good of a macross experience it was in comparison to what i've experienced um but I would give it, I'd give it an eight, a solid eight. I would have loved to have played this back then because it probably would have blew my mind a lot more than it did here recently, and it really did blow my mind. Yeah. That being said, it's yeah, like I said, it is, it gets repetitive, but you know, for for what it is, you're you're not gonna be doing much more uh, unless you wanna, I don't know, you wanna try to juggle Misa and Minmay. Uh, there ain't too much more going on in the uh, Macross <laughs> world. <laughs> Next week, we had uh, kind of talked about it. There's a uh, special event coming up. 35th anniversary of The Legend of Zelda. Yeah, so we're going to do a, uh, a tribute to uh, this this game that maybe 
be good or bad. I don't know. <laughs> the greatest song in the world. It's one of it the most is. recognizable, that's for sure. This is this is just a tribute. <laughs> it's a tribute. Each of us we're gonna to pick one of the games out of the Zelda series just to kinda of talk about uh, next week. Yes. So uh Daz, uh which Sir. which Zelda are you going with? The C D I uh, version? Oh and NES uh, Adventure of Link, man. You're going with Zelda 2. Yeah. Yeah. You tell you. Like in a, a garden of flowers, the raccoon still picks the weed. No, Adam. <laughs> Jones, you really you need to give uh, Zelda 2 a, a fair shake. Don't, don't sell yourself short. No, I haven't played it in a, in a very long time. So I look forward to uh, seeing what Daz Dad's coming back into it and what he comes out with for us. Mr. Gohan, uh, which Zelda are you going with, sir? I uh, couldn't help myself. I picked my favorite of all the Zelda games. I picked the SNES Classic, uh, A Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. I haven't played that one in a while either. Um, that, that is a, a, great, a great game, though, from memory. I actually never played that one. Oh, really? Yeah. You should... You should uh, well listen to Gohan's review of it, and, uh, but you should. It's it's really good. I myself, and I'll take it to the end. I'll take it to the. Uh, I'll go with the Breath of the Wild, so we get a good uh, good cross section. Yeah, it's, it's it's a cross section. There, there's so many good ones that are left out. There's only three of us, man. We need more people here. I demand <laughs> representation for the Wind Waker. CRT Gaming now taking out. I mean, <laughs> if you want to dabble, you could, you know. Dab. There's nothing stopping you. Just say it. <laughs> it's the 35th anniversary. Like we'll we'll pick our pick our things and uh, pick our titles and uh, just uh, let it kind of take its course. Yeah. All right. Well, there sounds like a plan. Hot. <laughs> Be hot. Stay tuned for next week, and uh, we'll have the uh, 35th anniversary tribute to the Legend of Zelda. Until then. It's <laughs> Jones, Daz, Pick, and Gohan. <laughs> and we are signing out. Until next time. <laughs> Sexy time. <laughs>